there's been a lot of speculation out there about the symbolic meaning of the word jade in jade helm. Some people think that jade stands for green, green stands for money, and the green money symbolizes the financial collapse of America, while others speculating that since the Asian people seem to favor jade for jewelry, because jade brings luck and good fortune, then therefore it must mean that the Chinese or the Asians will be at the helm when the collapse occurs. I'm going to show you that the jade behind jade helm is actually an acronym for something much more straightforward. Raytheon, one of the leading premier defense contractors in the world, it runs a BBN technologies program. What is BBN? It's innovation on demand. Raytheon BBN Technologies, one of Raytheon's premier research and development centers. Okay, and it goes on to explain some of the key points of the BBN Technologies program. It's a world-class quantum research team enabling next generation quantum sensing, communications, and computing. BBN's multi-sensor processing systems are in use in, in the U.S. Navy, U.K., Royal Air Force, and Canadian Navy. Our software has been a major part of every generation of North American tactical IP military network. They can, and they go on to say they continue to lead in speech recognition technology, making dramatic improvements in accuracy. So why, you ask, is the NSA collecting all of your voice communications? This is why. Some more about their technologies include call center analytics, shooter detection for helicopters, shooter detection for vehicles in fixed positions, shooter detection for dismounted troops, automated monitoring and translation of foreign news broadcasts, communications, Portable real-time two-way translation, on-the-fly language translation, automated monitoring and translation of foreign language websites, multifunction Android situation awareness device. This is going to be very important. Okay, passive infrared image capture device, unattended video ground sensors. That is also going to be very important. Okay. Um, BBN's uh, research and development expertise spans the following domains, big data, cloud computing, cybersecurity, distributed systems, immersive learning, networking and communication, quantum physics, sensor systems, speech language and multimedia technologies, and synthetic biology tools. This is going to be important. Okay, and as we all know, and if you've watched my videos, uh, that the Jade Helm operation um, is basically predicated on a platform of network-centric warfare. Network-centric warfare is also a key component of PNAC, the project for the new American century. The DOD now mandates that global, a global information grid, or a GIG, okay, is going to be the primary framework for network-centric warfare. Now let's like, take a look at this uh, DTIC Newswire, which came out on April 10th, 2015, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. The Pentagon is starting a strategic research and development effort focused on developing next generation technologies in order for the U.S. military to retain its technological advantage on the world stage. The Long Range Research and Development Plan, or LLRDP, allows industry, academia, and small business to competitively work on new ideas and concepts while focused on specific research areas that will result in new military technologies. 
<laughs> this is actually funny because they're spying on everyone especially technology companies why pay you to develop something when you they can let you develop it and just take it it goes on to say that the LRRDP consists of five working groups that focus on the following specific technologies space undersea air dominance str and strike air and missile defense, and lastly, a technology-driven group with a goal of identifying and integrating commercial technological advancements. Well, isn't that the mastering the human domain aspect of Jade Helm? Isn't that its foundation? Here at the Department of Defense's science blog, Dateline March 16th, 2015. Let's see. Uh, this blog is highlighting the, the specific work of this particular scientist at the DOD, and he's being asked, what is your role in SSC Pacific's Advanced Photonic Technologies Branch? He replies, a rather complicated question. At the DOD's Warfare Center, science and te technology professionals are uniquely positioned to serve in many roles. We perform more applied research than you'll find in academia. Well, no kidding. Um, we have out there what's called Tier 1 through 5 and beyond technologies. Tier 1 technology is what you basically find on the shelves at Radio Shack. Tier two is more or less the new and innovative stuff coming out like the Apple Watch. Tier three is the semi-classified weaponry and technology being used by the military. While tiers four and five are those technologies that are dedicated to the black projects, the military, and other, other government rabbit holes that um, these technologies are, are being bottle capped in and you don't even hear about them. Free Space Optical Communication, or OCOMs, provide dramatically higher bandwidths compared to all wireless methods. When wireless data rate is paramount, OCOMs is the method of choice. The additional limitations presented by he's talking about undersea environment here, but you'll see that the applications go far beyond that. Um, notably lack uh, high frequency radio wave propagation. If, for example, an airborne or a float platform requires communication with the submarines at speed and depth, OCOM is only covert and high bandwidth method available. The concept of OCOMs for the undersea domain has been around for more than 30 years. And he says that it's time that we take this technology a leap forward. He goes on to say in the interview that he's also supporting a program that is developing the wireless transmission of power and communication. This is techno technology. Now remember going back here to Raytheon's page on its BBN project <clears throat> where it goes on to describe all of the technologies that are going to be employed in Jade Helm. I don't believe that there is any symbolic significance to the Jade in Jade Helm. I think it's pretty much out there. It's the Joint Assistant for Development and Execution. It says right here, Jade. By who? BBN Technologies. From where? Raytheon. In conjunction with who? DARPA. This defense um, program paper is 33 pages long, and I'm not going to sit here and read the whole thing to you. I've read it, and I'm going to go over what I think are some of the key points in it. Jade can be used to to support both deliberate and crisis action or time-sensitive planning. 
Jade software enables a military planner to build a preliminary force deployment plan in less than an hour. Jade uses knowledge-intensive planning technique that employs case-based and generative planning methods to handle large-scale, complex plans in minimal time. The tool supports rapid retrieval and reuse of previous plan data, both deliberate plans and previously developed crisis plans. Uh, to support plan platform development, constraint checking is provided and results are used to provide the user with reminders of steps to do during the force deployment planning process. The ACO version of Jade, or the Adaptive Course of Action, is configured to derive planning data such as preferred forces, planning guidance, and planning state information from the ACOA campaign object. Deployment planning in Jade starts with the receipt of a mission statement. Jade follows a case-based reasoning or CBR paradigm in supporting the matching of data about the current mission with data that describes the deployment plans that constitute the loaded library of deployment plans or case base. Jade's three major technology components include Format, Prodigy, and Parka. Format users interact with Jade through a user interface that is directly connected to the format or force management and analysis tool module. Format was originally developed at the MITRE Corporation and used to support knowledge acquisition. That's data collection. That's what the NSA is performing on everyone. The front end of Jade collects information such as mission goals and state information about the planning contacts through format and presents it to Prodigy, which we'll look at in a minute, for the use in planning. Prodigy then provides guidance through the front end to the suggestion module, which, which then presents guidance and or suggestions to the user about how to modify or create a deployment plan. Do you see where this is going? So Prodigy is the force management module of this system. The Prodigy module will tell the user what forces are to be deployed to specific geographical locations and where certain forces are preferred for inclusion with a deployment plan. The third module in this system architecture for Jade is Parka. Parka is a high-performance knowledge-based management system. It's been shown to effectively handle extremely complex structure matching queries against large knowledge bases or large information databases. So with Jade, we're looking at a computer-based warfare system that determines and identifies targets and under lessons learned here it says unfortunately we overestimated the deployment planning skill level of the typical jade user and it goes on here to say for example observation of novice users indicates that these users often cannot interpret the tpfdd data field values well, this kind of reminds me of that movie War Games and that line they said, do you want to play a game? This could have disastrous results, in my opinion. And here is an extension paper to the Jade program, which is 87 pages long. I'm only going to briefly go over some of the highlights to it. I'll leave a link for this uh, in the description box below, and you can go read it for yourself. But there are some key points in here that I think are very important. Raytheon reference architecture, enabling timely and affordable customer solutions. The customer they're referring to is the DOD. Beyond reactive planning self-adaptive software and self-modeling software in predictive deliberation management. In, uh, informing high-level trades, some novel techniques. And when they speak of trades here, they're not talking about, you know, 
uh, going down to the local auction and trading your cow for a horse. They're talking about trades between casualties and targets. This is a very technical part. I've read through it already. I'm not going to go into explaining all the acronyms and everything in here, but it's an important part of this program. User perspectives on design logic and military training simulators, i.e. holographic battlefield displays, the human terrain of network-centric operations. And again, they're discussing the edge organizations, and I really think you should explore that. Experimentation with network-enabled joint tactical training. And here's all the references to the Jade Project in this paper. The human dimension of networks. This involves the development of the human terrain system. Here under design patterns for net centric applications, it states relatively little attention is being paid to strategies for consuming and exploit, wait a minute, relatively little attention is being paid to strategies for consuming and exploiting data effectively and efficiently. New software platform capabilities and experimentation campaign for Elicit. Elicit is an experimental laboratory for investigating information sharing, collaboration, and trust. And if you hadn't, haven't seen it yet, go watch the report I did on um, Jade Helm, 21st Century Policing. The documents um, presented there the 1033 program and executive order 13684 reference this extensively. Efficient experimental design tools for exploring command and control organizational structures references uh, the radical transformations uh, to the structures that will be necessary due to the information revolution and the changing global environment the failed thermostat, the illusion of control in an information-rich age. The concept of command and control is central to modern warfare. Command is a legal and behavioral term referring to a designated individual leader's responsibility and accountability for everything the leader's unit of command does and does not do. Well, a network-centric warfare platform takes the individual decision-making out of the equation. The system is making the decisions for you. Efficient XML, taking that centric operations to the edge. As the military shifts towards network centric operations, the vision of sharing common information objects between command centers, aircraft, maritime, and mobile land forces over a single global network seems closer than ever. This is the mastering the human domain, mastering domains of air, sea, land, space, and cyberspace. Analysis and planning using the HTA or human terrain analysis tool. Sharing awareness and problem solving, introducing the concepts of embodied knowledge, epistemic and pragmatic action, and this section elaborates on the interpretation of shared awareness on the basis of the asymmetry between information and knowledge. Well, you don't have knowledge when you have a computer making decisions for you. Computers analyze vast sums of data and spit out probabilities or scenarios, or in the case of the Jade software program, uh, war plans. And this section is ominous. Machine interpretable representation of commander's intent. 
the network-centric approach envisioned in the global information grid enables the interconnection of systems in a dynamic and flexible architecture to support multilateral civilian and military missions. The process of sense-making in complex human endeavors. The approach uses a set of cognitive constructs that translates tacit knowledge to the focal knowing of the objective world. They are mapping your mind. Developing smart automated opposing forces for battlefield simulations and intelligence analysis. Development of decision aids that can predict adversaries' intent and range of possible behaviors, as well as automation of such technologies within battlefield situations, would greatly enhance the efficacy uh, and mission rehearsal solutions. Instruction sets to use and test a transformation towards an agreed and non-failing state. For a joint force commander to find the instructions set to civilian and military organizations that transform a failing state towards an agreed end state is a problem due to the overwhelming amount of dynamics, interactions, and generative capabilities hidden in this is, cognitively is a cognitively difficult task to grasp for commanders and practitioners. So now we have software that will do that for you. Community of interest, model-based languages enabling composable net-centric services. Net-centric services shall be designed to collaborate with other services used within the supported community of interest. Oh, that might be Facebook, LinkedIn, the cloud, your cell phone messages, text messages, land phone calls, the whole nine yards. A process for placing the human at the center of the constructive sim simulation. And this section goes on to describe different aspects of human behavior and characteristics and how these characteristics can be used within a range of different types of constructed simulation. This is directed at the human population. Potential benefits and implications of privacy protection and anonymity for command and control through hidden communication services. And it goes on to say it's difficult to predict in advance what sources of intelligence will be used and if one is communicating with small civilian cells, the internet might be the only available channel. They're going to be monitoring that too. And how are they going to accomplish these hidden communications endeavors? By using an onion routing. Or those of you out there who are familiar with it, Tor browsing. Distributive cognitive components. They describe this as a theoretical framework, which I would argue that it's theoretical and goes on to state that distributive uh, cognition emphasizes the distributed nature of cognitive, cognitive phenomena across individuals, tools, technologies, and er internal and external representations. Designing killer applications of NCW, a process to support creation and innovation. Well, that kind of speaks for itself. Information content for adaptive network performance, queuing theory and axiomatic design approach. The intelligent decouplers that can provide extra bandwidths in the network to re reduce information overload and thus permit the network to dynamically adjust itself to uncertainties has been discussed. Remember over here on the Raytheon page, where it says, um, it goes on to describe the various technology solutions they're going to be working with. Android situation awareness and bandwidth extenders.
we have designed and built a service-oriented architecture and service invocation capability to these tactical edge networks. We talked about the edge networks earlier. We briefly went over them. Autonomous mobile nodes within our swarming architecture also have the capability to reconfigure the network topography to optimize service response time with, while at the same time completing complementary tasks such as um, area searches. So what they're referencing here is the massive collection of this metadata using cell phone technology and cell phone towers in the transmission and receipt of data on this JADE program. Understanding patterns of team collaboration employed to solve unique problems. Macro cognition is a NASCAN area of knowledge engineering that focuses on understanding how cognition emerges in natural environments. One goal for studying, studying macrocognition is to understand the complexity entailed in inter and intra individual cognition. They're dissecting the human thinking and behavioral process. The Jade program will provide the military with virtual reality uh, simulation models. Advanced automated geospatial tools. They will be able to add a region's culture to command decisions, cultural aspects of the people of the region. Jade will be able to address issues within and among the physical, communications, information, and human domain layers of the network. It will be spanned over a cognitive, social, and physical domains of the network, which is the network being the, um, oh, where did I have it here? The global information grid, as well as the network being the human terrain system. Jade addresses the fact that as the enemy adapts to our technology and finds methods to minimize the exposure, the kill chain had to be compressed from hours to seconds. Obvious impediments to the fast time sensitive targets engagement are air aircraft strike time and administrative delay in the kill chain. Moving toward the theory of cyber power, and I venture to say this is no longer a theory. This aspect of the Jade program places a particular emphasis on cyberspace, cyber power, and cyber strategy. It goes on to explain that it's expected that the theory will continue to evolve as key technical, social, and informational trends begin to stabilize. This section notes the ongoing development and operational use of unmanned area, aerial vehicles or drones. Can we say Skynet? The Jade program will also be able to provide effective real-time early warning and decision analysis for monitoring, assessing, forecasting, and preventing regional conflicts and instability. Leveraging emerging technology to maintain corporate situational awareness. Social networking utilities such as Facebook and LinkedIn and personal weblogs have proliferated, becoming key information mediums for a younger generation. Operationalizing social engineering for offensive cyber operations. That needs no explanation. Definitions of situational development in current field manuals and other doctrinal documents are almost exclusively combined to its application to conventional warfare in which the enemy is clearly defined. Its operational strategies and tactics are well understood. The activities occurring on the battlefield can be finely monitored and with deployed sensors, nanotech, and observers, drones, 
as situations unfold over hours or days. A decision support system for crowd control. And as we can see with the growing unrest in this country, this is going to be an integral part of the Jade system. Multi-core processors scaling into thousands of processors per chip will soon be prevalent in all C2 systems. This is quantum computing. The Jade system will be developing and applying a dynamic human terrain map, or an HTS. The Jade system will be able to develop physical structures that can support repetitive crimes. In other words, pre-crime determination. Jade is a distributed cognitive system. It thinks, or thinks it thinks. Using NATO human view products to improve defense support to civil authority. Jade, inter Jade will be using the concept of interagency crisis response and explains the ideal conditions under which crisis situations can be improved, as well as the potential problems associated with each response phase. In other words, they're preparing for civil unrest and using Jade to respond to it. Crisis-specific social networks, the interplay between organizational legitimacy and personal trust. Can we say winning the hearts and minds of the people? Jade is a self-organizing, vision-capable, expectation-capable, recognition-capable, emotional, emotion-intelligent, goal-oriented navigation system. As a mobile robot or animat, it explores an environment with visual inputs which are processed by networks that are sensitive to visual form and motion in the what and where streams, respectively. This is right out of DARPA. If there's anything I want you to take out of this, it is that the Jade program, the Jade system, it has the capability to dissect and analyze the human brain, human emotions, cultural differences, language, gather data, not just metadata, all data, from various social um, networking platforms and to put all of this into a system that will develop and disperse battle plans. I want you to understand that this is an entirely different type of warfare. It is not linear in nature where you shoot at who shoots at you. It is asymmetrical, it is network centric, and it relies on a global information grid which is the framework of the Jade military system. This is not a new program. This program's been under development through Raytheon and DARPA and various other um, technical think tanks out there that contract with the government for in the neighborhood of 20 years. And I think that the Jade Helm exercise is a rollout of this type of new military warfare technology and they're not only going to be using social engineering they're going to be using nanotechnology microsensors and they're going to be pumping all of this data and information including the data and information being collected by the NSA into this system to see what it spits out this is a trial run this system uses cognitive-based architecture for situation analyses. It reviews cognitive metrics. It verifies, validates, and accredits complex societal models and simulations. It uses demographics to enhance command functions.
So what do we do? How did we end up in this situation? Well, centers like these, this one, the data collection center in Fort Meade, second only to the Bluffdale, Utah, NSA data collection center, as well as the unknown amount of underground data centers that they've constructed and are using, need to be unplugged. The Gwen Towers need to be unplugged. If you can take away the eyes and ears of this monster, in other words, if you can stop the data collection currently underway by the NSA and several other organizations, there will be not much. There will be nothing to feed in to the Jade system. What is the meaning of Jade Helm? It's an AI quantum computing technology that produces holographic battlefield simulations that has the ability to use vast amounts of data being collected on the human domain to generate human terrain systems in geographic locations to identify and eliminate targets, insurgents, rebels, or whatever labels that can be flagged as targets on a global information grid in a network-centric warfare environment. In short, Jade Helm is not battles directed by generals and military commanders, but by a computer software program based on network-centric warfare at the helm. In my opinion, and I have no documentation to support this, I think the trigger that we're going to see, which may or may not occur during the Jade Helm 15 exercise in the Southwest, is going to be of the nature of a cyber attack. I don't think it's going to be uh, so much provocation of the military with the civilian population, although it could be, I don't think it's going to be, um, you know, um, a conventional attack, you know, via a bomb or whatnot of some American city, although it could be, but I think the amount of time and money that they've already expended on developing this asymmetrical warfare software known as Jade, they're going to use that and they're gonna use it to support the Hegelian dialectic problem reaction solution. Thank you for watching and please share this video with everyone. It's turning out that this whole exercise may be more diabolical than we initially thought.